Hey guys, it's Chris, and welcome to another Apple old technology video. Today, we are going to mess with an actual XServe model A1196, 2.26 gigahertz Intel Xeon Quad. It is a dual, dual core, uh, 2.26 gigahertz server um, with three bays. I actually acquired two of these servers for $25 each. Yes, that's right, $25. They work. The only thing that was wrong with this, which I discovered why it was so cheap, is, as you can tell by the uh, addition of some ghetto heat sinks with no mounts, it had no heat sinks. Why? Because they are apparently pure copper, really big, and probably worth about $30, $40 each. So, I got some parts on order, and uh, we're going to get this kicked <laughs> off in just a minute. Um, things you're going to need, yes, I'm in my PJs like usual, you're going to need, unless you have a video card in one of these slots, you're going to need one of these. This is a mini uh, DVI, this is just a Dynex, a little Best Buy job, to VGA. Why? Because there's nothing to plug into besides a mini DVI and it just goes in the back down here um, power it has two uh, yeah. two of the uh, this one has two 650 watt um, removable power supplies um, to remove them you just pull this and it will come right out. Um, one of these is actually bad. This model takes a special kind of memory called an ECC fully buffered DIM module. You can always tell the difference between a standard DIM because you will not see the memory chips. Usually they have this metal thing on them and it will actually tell you as you can see these are uh, 667s, but right there it's PC2 uh, 5300F. So, for fully What's going to happen is this until I get actual heat sinks installed, there's an air duct cover that goes over here like this, but I can't put it on because I have some heat sinks installed. Um, I have a couple other interesting things that I want to. Um, do to this. Now it takes a normal, uh, I put different drives in here. These are just standard serial ATA. Uh, this is a one terabyte Western Digital Green. I have a three in the other two bays. It does have three bays for storage. Um, they are standard SATA. So I'm back. I have two choices of boot media. I actually have the original uh, Mac OS X Leopard or 10 and Mac OS X 10 6 8 Snow Leopard. Um, it has a slot load CD-ROM in the front. So when I turn this on, when I plug this in, it is going to sound extremely loud. And when I mean loud, like jet engine loud. I'm zoomed back all the way. So this is going to be very loud. Here we go. Swing it loud, loud. And it might quiet him. <laughs> Very loud. Alright, that's too daggone loud. Okay. So we're booting. I don't know if you can hear me. But it's booting. I have a Snow Leopard disc in. Um, it's running. You can see the other unit is down here on the floor. Uh, I couldn't get that one to even come on. So we're going to move the tripod out a little closer. 
I'm sorry if I'm yelling, but it's just extremely loud in here. To get to the screen to see what's going on. The fans are not going to shut up because uh, there's no wires for the heat sink temperature. So, like, where I got my two crappy heat sinks, there's a wire that controls, just like this one right here, if you can see it. It controls uh, the motherboard to let it know what the temperature is running at for each processor. So it thinks that they're overheating. So the fans are running at full speed. Once I get my heat sinks in, they will have the plugs. Uh, the person who I bought this from damaged the prongs. They're very tiny uh, two-prong connector. I was going to take the temperature sensor off of this north bridge and stick it on there, but the south bridge doesn't have one. So I just figured, you know what? I'll let it roll, we'll see. Um, I think it's only like a 4X CD-ROM, DVD-ROM. So here we go. We're booting up into Snow Leopard server. Okay, so I'm back. Um, I got a Leopard disc. Here's what I think's going on. Since Apple are a bunch of buttholes, they make all the hardware and software for their own drives. They also used to do this thing called Apple branded hard drives, which kind of look like this. You got a little freaking Apple logo. That means that this drive, it's my old MacBook laptop drive, um, has Apple firmware on it. For shits and giggles, I'm going to use this drive and see if it sees it. Look at that. 120. That sucks eight. That sucks. Yeah, it's, it's installing. Put my screw case on there, it's a little quieter. It'll be nice when I get my fans, plug it in, put the lid on, I can shut up. I'll follow up with that, but hey, a $25 actual x serve actually two of them, 25 bucks, enough trays to do them, and uh, hey, I got a bad tray, I got some other trays I gotta try. But I'm not going to bore you anymore with this craziness. It is installing. It works. 25 bucks. So you can see it's two, two gigahertz dual with two gig 667 DDR2 FB because I have to put the other chip in. So. Mm. So what I'm going to do is that's what I'm going to do. So we're just going to go ahead and shut this down normally. So we're back. Uh, I got it all done. Um, I took the the two six sixes out of the busted non-working server. Took the two O's, put them there. Um, the other heat sinks from the busted server. Put the two six sixes in, RAM cover, both FB dim, so it's eight gig. I put the network card in, which works uh, from the other one. Um, covers off, so I still got some lights on. I was doing some system updates, which appear to be done. The reason that it wasn't restarting was I was impatient and didn't wait. Um, once the post happened, I just was immediately looking for the swirly, and uh, that's it. So it's good um, running. I'm gonna put the lid back on after it gets up to date. Uh, the quads do not apparently work. I've tried them several times they were from a, a old windows server and you know they're doing their thing and it worked fine it's crowded in here so once again i'll go over while it's quiet what we got here so we have a power button um a lock mechanism which is just like a photo cell so if i put my key in which is an allen wrench and rotate this it moves it to the locked photo cell position then this light will be solid indicating a lock and then you roll it back with your key which is an allen wrench the other way and it will unlock this is my system uh light uh, i gotta do an smc reset because i swapped processors utilization on the cores um not necessarily the disc this is bay one middle is bay two which is empty um this is bay three i do have a software install currently doing the updates and then it was indexing um, this is your normally your RAID controller and your power management area where the power management or power supplies come in. You have a DVD CDRW. Uh, you can upgrade these 
to the super drives, which are DVD burners, but I don't actually burn discs. Um, eight, oh, sorry, eight FB slots for DDR2-667, uh, which is PC2-5300. Remember, these are 2006 models, so all this stuff is, is relatively, you know, old, but it still, it still works totally fine. Um, this is an ATI something 1000 turd uh, slot, what's called a mez or a mezzanine slot. It's got a snap down type. There's not a PCI Express type of loader for this. You can get PCI X, which are the original white, you know, uh, PCI slots. But I don't have a need for that. I'm going to throw a fiber card in it, which I have for the XServe raid and. Um, yeah, X-Serve and X-Serve RAID. So that is a 1 gig, I don't even know the manufacturer of this. It looks like SysConnect with a K. Yeah, it's a dual uh, 1 gig Ethernet card. Oh, one important thing I forgot to mention in the back. We have a mess because I'm in my work side. Okay, so you have a serial port. Oh, that's an ID light. Uh, it's also the same as the front. You can also use it as a UID if you need to find the server. You can push it and it'll stay blinking to identify. Um, I gotta fix the blink. Uh, you have a serial port, my Ethernet, of course. This is the mini uh, DVI to VGA. Um, you have two, where are they? <laughs> two 100 uh, meg, 10 100 Ethernets, which are also lights out functionality. Each card can be Ethernet and a lights out card at the same time. Um, then you have little fire wires. They're 800, um, slot one, slot two, and uh, two, two USBs and two hot swappable removable power supplies. You can just grab them. Whoops. And they uh, have like a flap here, watch this. So as I pull the, the air flaps, and that's pretty ingenious little Little details that Apple does, which is nice. All right, so we're back up with uh, whoops. Why does this thing spin? Sit in front of the fan. So uh, download Flash. Uh, yeah, no, we don't use Flash no more. HTML5. And uh, that's about it. So let's uh, take a peek here and see what she says. So there you go, Mac OS 10 server, 1068. It is a two, 2.66 dual core Intel Xeon. Uh, anyways, these are the built-in suckers. Oops. Yeah, ENO, EN1, EN2, EN3. Let's see what they look like. I didn't even check them. La la la, there we Oh yeah. A PCI Ethernet 1. PCI Ethernet 2 and built in Ethernet 1, Ethernet 2. I got it as this, 192.168.1.200 for the, uh, for the uh, ILO functionality which you can set up when you're setting up the server. It's also available in the system or the server admin or server preferences. And that tells you everything you need. Snow Leopard server is probably the last reliable server there is because the other ones were just desktop operating systems with apps that made them server from Lion all the way oh crap I got silver crap over me from Lion all the way to the newer operating system versions they're just the desktop operating system with a server app that gives you some basic crap functionality so anyway I hope you enjoyed this extended uh yeah go over do over configuration so i hope you enjoyed this extended configuration of an apple x serve model a1196 226 intel xeon uh stay tuned for 
more videos on Apple hardware and my extra braid setup and just stuff. Plenty of stuff. And uh, thank you again for your support and watching and I appreciate it greatly. So have a great day.